Hey, it's Alex from Board Game Co. And today we're going to be talking about all things Storm Center. We're going to be talking about the miniatures and I'll have a giveaway associated with those. I'll be talking about the campaign itself, why I backed it, why it might be a game for you, why it might not be a game for you. And then finally, I'll be talking about the pledge manager itself, guiding you through the various pledge levels, those that were in the campaign, those that were added after the fact, the various optional buys they added, basically walking you through all those, similar to what I did for the Nemesis pledge manager a few weeks back. Now, I will say there'll be timestamps down below, so if you want to jump to any particular section. And I'll start with the, the miniatures over here and I'll see if I can get them to focus this did not work well the first five times I did it but basically there we go so this is one of the miniatures on the worst uh, miniature turntable you will ever see but the when it actually focuses the quality of the miniature not my camera the quality of the miniature is impressive if I can get it to focus let's try the other one the other one is even cooler honestly so whoa look at her look at her if you can nope you can't get her to focus So that was actually edited because I didn't want to constantly deal with the focusing. But look at that. Look at the quality of that miniature. I mean, everything just stands out. This is... It's just insanely gorgeous. I mean, this thing is insane. And there'll be a giveaway for this. Uh, basically, in the comments down below, tell me why, I don't know, just give a reason why you backed Storm Sunder or why you wanted to back Storm Sunder or basically just why you want the miniatures. Um, any sort of actual reason applies. And I'll have a giveaway in roughly a week or so of, well, pull the comment and send them your way. So you'll get a box of these two miniatures from the campaign. And that's basically it. Those are the two miniatures I have right now. They look amazing. Uh, this one, far more than this one. Nothing wrong with this one, but, I mean, he can't hold up to this giant freaking angel thing with the amazing wings. The detail is absolutely insane. And so that's basically that for the miniatures. Again, just comment down below with some sort of reason. Uh, a general comment will not qualify, sadly. You just have to have any reason why you back Storm Sunder or why you want the miniatures or why you attempted to back Storm Sunder. You don't actually have to have back Storm Sunder get these. But from there, let's go into the should you back it, should you not, why I backed it. And it's going to be a different, a little different than my usual thing because for a few reasons. First of all, I actually covered this a long time ago. I covered this campaign, Storm Sunder, when it first came out. This is more before I really had a format to my videos in terms of the Kickstarter videos. But I was just talking about a game that I was personally excited about. And that was basically it. I was excited about it. I am excited about it. And Storm Sunder is a game that, well, I continue to be excited about. Despite having included it, you know, two days ago in a video of top 10 Kickstarters you shouldn't have backed, where I included Storm Sunder in that list. And I included it in that list because of the fact that this is coming off, this is from Lazy Squire Games. It's coming off the fact that they were they did Wild Descent, which is drastically delayed, and then they had another giant epic campaign game for $500 to get the, everything all-inclusive, which is a lot of money for someone's second campaign when they haven't delivered their first. At the same time, I talked about it in yesterday's video, and I talked about this when I did my first video on Storm Thunder again, and I'll talk about it again now. The reason I am not concerned about that is because they delivered this game to King of Average. If you just want to sell someone on a bunch of miniatures, just sell them miniatures. You don't need to give a good game as well. And it seems that they've put together a good game. Doesn't mean you'll like it, it doesn't mean I'll like it, but it certainly seems they put together a good game because they sent it to someone who was known for, well, not holding back his opinion. And that's something that really inspired a lot of confidence for when I was very much on the fence about the fact that it was an expensive game as their second campaign when their first campaign had not been delivered. But like I said, for me, that alone really just pushed the, it pushed me away from being concerned and a lot more into being excited for Storm Thunder. And what you mean to this game is probably what draws most people into this game, which is the miniatures. This is a game that's going to be compared to Madara to a degree. It's a giant, epic, uh, sprawling narrative campaign game in which it's not really legacy. You're not going to be destroying things, at least not that I know of, but it is going to be a legacy style game in the sense that you will have our campaign style game in the sense that you will be progressing through the game. You'll be making choices. Those choices will have far reaching consequences. I believe to a certain extent they, they base it off Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, the PC game in terms of that narrative and slash, you know, narrative narrative but also combat and mechanically based game and they're trying to do the same thing here and what drew me in is first of all as a backer of Wild Ascent so I was already aware of the company and then secondly the miniatures I mean this game is the very definition of miniature porn this game is is a gorgeous amazing miniatures that that really I mean look at this that that here we go this is that guy again if I can get him to maybe try to focus not really he does this one doesn't want to focus the other one does but that's that guy over there it looks 
Uh, incredible. Looks amazing. Let's see if we can find the angel somewhere. Maybe we'll cover the angel when we get up to the angel. But this game looks amazing. Everything about this game looks absolutely... I shouldn't say everything. The, the artwork on the cards I wasn't too into, but the general artwork on the boards, the artwork of the characters, the miniatures themselves, it all looks amazing. Like, absolutely blew me away and, and pulled me in. I was seeing these miniatures teased in their Facebook pages for months before this campaign launched, and I was so intrigued by miniatures. The game comes secondary, but miniatures. Now, when I say the game comes secondary, obviously I want a good game as well, and that's something that, if you're on the fence, watch King of Average's review. He really covered the game, and overall, he seemed to like it a lot. In fact, he did a second video with a cage uh, a, ma a cage matchup or something like that between, between uh, this game and a bunch of other games that were coming out roughly the same time, and he basically said that, if I recall correctly, he said that Storm Sunder won, or won in certain categories. I don't remember entirely, but that is, that is a testimonial. When you compare it to a bunch of games that he had the, the opportunity to play, to experience, and Storm Sunder did that well, that is incredible. This is a game that, well, I mean, oh my gosh, look at this pirate. We're going to come back to her. Uh, Lorelei Blackborn. We're going to come back to her because I do want to focus on that model, as well as these rune cannons. Absolutely adorable. But anyways, Storm Sunder is a game that, that it looks amazing. What is the actual gameplay like? Hopefully good. It's just going to be a skirmish game, a skir not really a typical skirmish game, but a skirmish game to a degree, a skirmish game in which that there's there's going to be elements of, ta of tactical maneuvering, of leveling up your character, of getting equipment, uh, of going through a story. And they do have the story broken up in terms of, of you can read full length chapters about what's going on, or you could just read the summary text and move on. They, they did give you that option. I can't remember the name. They had a name for it, but they gave you the option of choosing which way you want to experience that story. I believe they also had a companion app over here. So they also have a companion app to guide you through that if that's something that's more to your taste. This game is charming chock full of everything. It's chock full of, of, of components. It's chock full of miniatures of a wide variety of styles. You want your pirate miniatures? You got it. You want your Egyptian miniatures? You got it. Oh, there's Lady Renata. So let's look at Lady Renata again. That is... Let's see if we can get it to focus. Ah, this is like painful. Nope. Nope. Doesn't want to focus. That's Lady... Basically, well, that's from before, but that's Lady Renata, and it looks pretty amazing. It does not look that far off from this 3D render. Obviously, the 3D render looks more polished because, well, it has that polished look to it, but, like, I'm looking up this... I'm comparing them side by side. They are on point. That's a genuinely well-done miniature that really looks like the model. Uh, obviously, you have to look at each one. I'm not saying they'll all be like that, and obviously, these are not final productions, so that could vary, but this game has me excited for the giant hordes of amazing plastic that I will have on my table. And again, hopefully it'll be a good game as well. And that's basically why I backed it. As far as the value aspect, to show you back it from a value stance, I mean, this is a Kickstarter-only game. So ultimately, it really comes down to two things. Uh, well, really, one thing. The game will do well right away. Not a question at all. Once you get your game, you'll be able to turn around and sell it for more than you backed it. Automatically, guaranteed. Same thing I always say. It, it, people are going to be hyped. People are going to be want these hordes of plastic as soon as they can get their hands on. The only real risk factor is if you hold on to it for months and then it turns out to be a bad game. If the ratings come back and it, it just turns out to be a game that's not really, well, not enjoyed by most people, which I don't think is going to happen. Again, the King of Average review does matter. It doesn't mean it's for you or me, but it means it did, did well in some context. So, so I don't think it's going to completely flunk in that sense, but that is a potential thing. But that's going to be months down the road. So if you get this game, same thing I say. Back, get the game, play the game, see if it's for you, and then if it's not, sell your pledge and any Wave 2 stuff as soon as you possibly can if this game is not for you. And if it is for you, well, then you have a pretty cool game with a lot of plastic, a lot, a lot of plastic that you can get to the table. And then lastly, that other risk factor is a risk factor. It's the same reason why I put this in that in that list of top 10 Kickstarters you shouldn't have backed, which is at the end of the day, despite the fact that I backed this, despite the fact that I'm all in on this, despite the fact that it looks cool and should deliver all those things, at the end of the day, Wild Ascent is, like, it's a two-year overdue campaign, or I don't know if it's two years overdue, it's been two years, it's at least a year overdue, that is late. It's not a great sign, and take that into account as, as you decide whether to back this game or not, whether to late pledge this game or not. For me, it's not stopping me. I prefer a good game late. I don't mind waiting for a good value, a good game, as, assuming I get it eventually, and I think I will get it eventually. I know that the publisher has a bunch of other games lined up in their queue, and there's only so long that they can coast on Wild Descent and Storm Thunder before they have to have something delivered 
in order to well to have anyone backing their next Kickstarter. So that is all these things are things to take into account. But but there is a risk factor, but I don't think it's a big risk factor. I think it's just something to be aware of because we all have to make decisions. And that's basically going to cover Storm Thunder. Again, I didn't go as heavily into this as I do sometimes because well I've covered this a few times in a few different ways, and I'm just basically excited about it. And from there. Let's jump into the Pledge Manager. And so, actually, no, let's cover a few models first. I meant to do that. So first of all, there's a post-human cross over here. So just in, in case anyone's a post-human fan, they check out that over there. Uh, there's an Oathsworn crossover. I mentioned this when I did my Oathsworn Should You Back a video. But this is an Oathsworn crossover. It looks incredible. Again, it's, you know, if you want to use that in your Oathsworn game, just back Storm Sunder so you can pay $500 so you can get this one miniature for your Oathsworn game. Then we have one of my favorite sculpts in the entire game. I adore this sculpt. I think this sculpt is incredible. I cannot wait to have this on my table. It just look at her. I mean, she's what's her name again? Her name is uh, Lady or Lorelei Blackburn. Blackburn. But like, look at that. It just it, it's cool. This is not something you get to see in most games. And then finally, one of my favorite sculpts is the monkey shooting cannons. I've talked about this one before. I love it. It's a monkey shooting a cannon. I can't get over it. It's just, it is what it is. And that is basically Storm Thunder. Here are some examples of some of the actual minis uh, in terms of if you want to get like a little bit less excited about the comparison. So these are some actual miniatures. Obviously, they look less pristine or less amazing than renders, which is, that's reality. But they still look great. They still have that detail. And honestly, this guy in person looks significantly better than this one over here. So I would say the truth is somewhere in between. Because while it looks worse than these, it looks much better than this. I'm looking at it in front of me on the table, and it looks significantly better. And with that, let's head off to the... Oh, Excavation Earth has nothing to do with that. Let's head to the Pledge Manager. So, the Pledge Manager. We're going to have a lot of things to cover here, so this is the part where we start going through the various Pledge Levels. And to begin with, in Storm Thunder, we had three main Pledge Levels. We had 149 for the Heirs of Rune Pledge, 299 for the Bones of the Conquered Pledge, and 449 for the Pharaoh's Wrath Pledge. And we'll go through that over here. Let's see what they, they have over here in terms of showing you that content. Do they have any good? I recall them having a good... Sorry for all the rapid scrolling through things. They had... Here we go. So, this is going to be what you get in the Heirs of the Rune Pledge. You're getting two boxes, 100 miniatures, 67 large cards, uh, 1,095 cards. And some of this may have changed because of stretch goals. I don't recall exactly. Uh, in the the in the next pledge off, the Bones of the Conquered, you got four boxes. So, you're getting a whole bunch more content. Uh, you, and by the way, they are self-contained. You, you have fully contained adventures. They might have further ongoing stories, but they are self-contained in the sense that you're not missing out on some sort of cliffhanger or whatnot. And then for a Pharaoh's Wrath, Wrath Pledge, you got six boxes, 348 miniatures, 322 large cards, all this stuff over here. And again, stretch goals might have been different, but you're basically tripling the content. So you can get between 150, 300, or 450 to get that. Now, I will note at either, first off of the bat, at the 299 and the 449 pledge, there's an additional incentive to back in the sense that you are getting the miniature pack. If we can find that over here, you know, let's just go straight to the pledge manager. <coughs> So you'll be getting the miniature pack if you backed at any of those. The Arrows of Rune 3D pack, this is included in the Bones of the Conquered, A Pharaoh's Wrath, and the Nier Pledge and Late Pledge. The Nier Pledge is the second, is the fourth pledge, which wasn't in the original Kickstarter. We'll talk about that. So this $49, $49 miniature pack, which came with a lot of extra content, not just what you're seeing over here, uh, came with a lot of extra stuff, but that is going to be included in both of those uh, higher pledge levels, in any of the higher pledge levels. So... Let's go through what we have over here in the Pledge Manager. So we first of all, we have those three pledges we just talked about. We also have the Nier Pledge. The Nier Pledge is 623. That's a lot of money. But it gives you basically everything. And it gives you a 600, if I recall correctly, not, not if I recall correctly, I have notes. It gives you $684 worth of content. So this Nier Pledge is going to be giving you a whole bunch of the optional buys. We'll go through each one. But if you add it all up, it does give you $684 worth of content. So it is a good deal, assuming you want all the things in there. Or even assuming you want most of the stuff in there. It doesn't really have to be everything. Uh, in terms of the, the what's it called? The, these little optional buys. Let's go through optional buys one at a time. Uh, the Faceless Expansion. The Faces Expansion is included only in the Nier Pledge. So if you want the Faces Expansion, the only way to get it is to buy it as an optional buy or to get the Nier Pledge level. If you want the Wayward Squire Expansion, the Wayward Expi Squire Expansion is there if you either back it right now and you get it as an optional buy or if you are a Wild Ascent backer. Those are the two ways to back it. And I will note, on the side of your screen when you're checking out, it will say whether you have some of these things in your cart. So if you're on the fence, it should say it on the side. It's not if you're on the fence. If you're unsure, it should say it on the side. And if you think you should get it and you don't see it on the side, reach out to the project creator, check it out. Because if you, for instance, back Wild Descent and you don't see the Wayward Squire in your cart, then reach out to the creator because that's a problem, that's a mistake that, you, that he will happily fix. From there, we have the Heirs of Rune Terrain Pack. 
This is included in everything except for the 149 pledge. So if you're getting the 149 pledge, you'll have to buy this separately. If you're getting any other pledge level, it's included already. Uh, Fear of the Last Titan. That's another one that will say on the side of your screen if you got it. But this was an early bird pledge. I can't remember if it was the first day only, the first two days. I don't remember what it was exactly. But this was an early bird pledge. Or you can buy it as an optional buy. Those are your options for Fear of the Last Titan. Or if you backed Wild Descent, that also got you in the door. So any of those options. Early Bird, Wild Descent, or if you, uh, what's it called, buy it as an optional buy. Uh, at least the Lost Princess of Tarpit. This was for anyone who backed the campaign and selected a pledge. Meaning if you actually chose a pledge level in the campaign instead of going in for a dollar, then you got at least the Lost Princess of Tarpit. Otherwise, you will have to take it as an optional buy. Uh, Villains and Civilians, Villains and Civilians 2, and Villains and Civilians 3. So... These are fun ones. So first of all, I'll note these are all, these were not covered in the campaign. They were all added in the pledge manager after the fact. All three of these, and they had, they had better updates. You know what? Let me pause for a second and find the updates. So here we go. Here's the update for those. Uh, basically, I'll include a link down below. But the mini box, the mini boss box add-ons, there are three different ones. They all include different characters that you may encounter throughout the story, but don't have miniatures. Most of them you won't even fight, or if you were fighting with them, you would have proxied with another miniature. They are basically extras to account for the sheer number of characters this game has, and the fact that not every potential character you'd encounter would have its own miniature. And so that's what these boxes are. All three of these boxes over here are going to be $49 each, $150 worth of miniatures but they basically they include roughly 26 miniatures each it depends they, i think they have different counts but basically like 26 26 and let's see it looks like all three are 26 miniatures so 26 miniatures in all three roughly two bucks per mini so that is a little higher than you know backing the actual core pledges themselves but you get a ton of miniatures some of these most amazing look again look at these things look at these renders granted they're renders but if you are someone who's into minis, whether you want this game or not, this game has some of the most gorgeous miniatures that you'll ever see. I mean, look at what you get in these miniature boxes. It's, yeah, I mean, I'm tempted. I'm probably going in for these. I am going in for these, not, not probably. But it is one of the few times where I'm going fully all in on just the sheer amount of miniatures you have. They just look incredible. And these, again, they're fully cosmetic. You can play the entire game without these. You'll proxy one or two miniatures when you encounter someone run in one random encounter here or there. Look at this guy. A again, these are just incredible miniatures. Absolutely incredible miniatures that I am so interested in. But they are, uh, you know, again, cosmetic, uh, cosmetic only. You don't have to get these no matter how cool they may look. And so that's all three of those Villains and Civilians boxes. Those are all included in the Nier Pledge. So if you want to get the, go to the Nier Pledge over here, all three of those boxes are included. That's part of why that pledge value is a good deal. The 449 plus the 50, 150 bucks each already would already take you to 600 alone. And then the Nier Pledge also gives you a few other things as well to further up the value. And then from there, we have the, what else do we have? We have the Villain Civilians, Villain Civilians. Then we have Stormbrush, okay? So Stormbrush is going to be, this is basically covering, it's covering a few hundred miniatures. I can't recall exactly. We'll give you 225 of your Wave 1 miniatures. And then Storm Wave 2 is 260 of your Wave 2 miniatures. For simplicity, they just dumped it down into Wave 1 and Wave 2. The actual quantity of miniatures will vary depending on what you got. They're just giving you two numbers. So the more stuff you added, the better uh, proportion of value you're getting. But it's basically going to be 129 or 149 to Stormbrush all your stuff. Uh, for me, I haven't decided what I want to do in this one because I'm not painting all these miniatures. I can tell you that much. I just don't have the time. Uh, the Stormbrush looks cool. I don't know how cool because honestly, I, I do like this one on the table anyway. Stormbrush will definitely look cooler, but is it going to look, you know, $270 cooler? I mean, I'm going to say the same thing I said about the Nemesis campaign, which is you can walk away spending $1,000 on this game and that might be amazing, or it might be $1,000 in a game that barely hits the table. I mean, Gloomhaven at $100 is starting to look pretty darn cheap, isn't it? So that's the Stormbrush over there. Then we have an additional dice set for $15. This is included in the Nier Pledge. We have Sleeves Wave 1. So we have Sleeves Pack, sorry, Sleeve Pack for Wave 1 and for Wave 2. This is going to be $59 and $109 respectively, covering 1,800 cards or 2,600 cards, 2,800 cards respectively, which if you compare it to Sleeve Kings, Sleeve Kings, for let's, just, let's use Sleeve Pack Wave 1 at $59 for that. Sleeve Kings would come in at around 36 or so to get everything, but these are 100 micron to Sleeve Kings 60, so it is a different experience. I still recommend Sleeve Kings in general this is a lot of money for sleeves but to each their own and obviously these are going to be you know i actually shouldn't say obviously i was going to say the branded sleeves but i'm not actually sure if they are branded sleeves or not and then from there lastly we have these two art books the they have the graphic novel and the art book the art book is included in that near pledge as well and so that is basically everything in terms of, again, once again, just do a quick run through. Faceless is basically in the Nier Pledge or you have to buy it optionally. Wayward Squire is for, Wayward Squire is if you back Wild Descent. Uh, the Errors of Rune is in any pledge level except for the basic one. Fear of the Last Titan is Early 
Bird while Descent. Uh, at least the Princess of Tarpit is, is if you select at any pledge level during the campaign, and then basically everything else is either an optional buy, or many of these things are in the Nier Pledge. The sleeves are not in the Nier Pledge. And that is basically everything you can get for Storm Center. There's a lot of content here. An absolute ton of content here. This game is either going to be one of the biggest busts in Kickstarter history, or it's going to be pretty awesome. And I think it's going to be pretty awesome. And actually, that's not true. There's a middle ground where it's just totally okay. But I think this game is going to be pretty awesome. I think this game is going to be fun. This game is going to deliver some of the best miniatures you will ever see, hopefully on the backdrop of a solid game. We won't know till it actually comes, and honestly, it's going to be late. I can tell you that much. I just assume it's going to be late, because you can't have the delays you had with Wild Ascent, and then assume this is going to be completely on time. Will this ship in May in, in May 2021? I wouldn't count on it. Uh, it might, but I certainly wouldn't count on it. I, I think if you're back in this game, you're investing in getting a giant horde of things down the road, which you'll probably need like four Calyx Cubbies to deal with. But you're going to get a lot of cool stuff. And that is basically Storm Sunder Heirs of Rune. It is a tricky one, because... It's overwhelming, it's content overload, it's money overload, but but there's some of the coolest miniatures I have ever seen. Legitimately, bar none, I can't think of cooler miniatures that I have seen than this. Uh, you know, this is this is not done by Arkan Studios, it's going to be it's a, a different, not Arkan, yeah, I think Arkan. This is not done by Arkan, uh, Wild Ascent was done with Arkan to a degree, but this game is... It's totally different. They, they, I, I don't remember who they're using as their, as their manufacturer, but it's going to be different production quality than Arkan, different production quality than Wild Ascent stuff. It is, it's it's going to be interesting. And that's basically Storm Sunder from Lazy Squire Games. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as, but don't forget that if you want these miniatures, put a comment down below as far as why you're backing it, not backing it, why you want the miniatures, and what is it is about Storm Sunder that pulls you in or alternatively scares you away. I just... You know, I'd love to hear your, your details down below. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe, and I hope you have a good one.